Remember only what you do for Christ will last. Remember only what you do for Christ will last. Hello, everybody. So Walter, so Walter, the Sir Walter Jones Show. Mm -hmm. I'm he. It is the midday connection, baby. How y'all is? Come on in as I eat some some olives, the great olives. I don't have any stock in this company, but I'm thinking about it. Mm -hmm. Olives, a place where Jesus gave the sermon, the mount. Mm -hmm. Listen, let's talk about the great falling of a international treasure, Notre Dame. It's a place where we all know and love. And I've never been there. And I thought maybe one day I'd go visit. It's a flame now. The spire has collapsed. The roof collapsed. And before you know it, it probably will be in total ruin um, by the time the last flame has flickered away. The architectural work in there is from Romanesque architecture. If you are anybody who studied the the uh, the Middle Ages, you would understand the the Romantic period. Romantic is not romance for love uh, in music. It really has a lot to do with the area of Rome and Italy and France, which calls it romantic or romantic uh, or Romanesque uh, period in architectural work. Um, it is a um, it is a treasure to behold, and not so because it is a building co constructed by the Catholics, although that was their building. I think because of the writing of Victor Hugo's, I think that is name his name, who gave us that wonderful tale of uh, the Hunchback of Notre Dame. Notre Dame. Okay, I was wondering if you. Yeah, I'm watching. When he gave us that, I think what it did, it took us. It took it. It put that that cathedral on the the world's see they they have uh the leaning tower of pizza the pizza okay not pizza although i want some pizza now uh i believe that notre dame is the most beloved of uh the treasures of France and it is well loved around the world. Now, not so much for its religion, although there's one billion uh, Catholics on the earth, but not admired so much for its religion as much as it is because uh, France have um, used to be, of course, uh, mainly a Catholic overtaken uh, city but uh, secularization uh, um, has overtaken now, and so you see a lot of uh, secularism going on there. And so now the building is more heralded as a work of art, uh, more so on the secular platform than it is in the religious platform. And that's why so many around the world is amazed at this burning. And I think it has the same effect uh, as if our White House was burning. You understand? So many people may want to know why Christians feel so sad about it. I, being a, a Christian, I'm not so sad that a Catholic building is being destroyed. I think some of y'all's churches probably need to be landed too. Landed, that means plain dog, meaning get rid of it. <laughs> because what's happening is uh, we tend to worship buildings. That's something innate in us. It is natural for mankind to do that, and the Jews did it in the Old Testament and the New Testament. They build their their tabernacle. They build the synagogue. Okay, uh, and they were they were torn down. Um, I look at um, the uh, the tabernacle. The temple um, that David was not allowed to build, but Solomon, he built it as well. And it was a priceless piece of, I mean, it was the, the gold that was in that place was amazing. And because of how they constructed this building, they could not even construct the building on, in Israel. God told them to, to 
refab of this temple outside of Israel. He did not want to hear the striking of the iron inside of Israel. He says, go outside the gates and refab that sucker, then bring it back in, and then you put it together. Why? Because the striking of iron was a representation of war, and God wanted this particular uh, building to be constructed uh, in peace. And this is why David could not construct this, this temple to God, because uh, David was a, a king of a man of war and bloodshed. Mm -hmm. And so that's right, Mother Bernie says, go in the force <laughs> and prefab this thing. And so you bring it in and then God put Solomon over it. And Solomon, as you know, served pretty much 40 years of peace. Um, so that's why God selected him because God knew that that would be a time of peace and he wanted that's the way it should be. And then when they dedicated the temple, then God came into the place and the, the Bible says that the smoke filled the place to the it, the elders, the musicians. They could not stand to minister because of the, because of the smoke. Mm -hmm. All right. And so that was honored by the Jews. And then, of course, it was destroyed. Uh, they were taken away uh, as was prophesied because the Jews, like us, um, have that type of history of turning from God and God gave them a, uh, some choices. So here's life. Here's death. But let me let me help you with this choice, okay? Get rid of death. Here's life. Choose that. And they didn't want to choose that, right? And so then Herod he uh, then built another temple for them, and then we know what happened to that. And then Nero just burned up stuff, and he played his his get fiddle, <laughs> and he blamed the Jews for all this. Okay, so we kind of we kind of know the history of these, and then. But there are some certain relics uh, that God allowed the men to honor and cherish because it reminds their hearts of God himself. Again, this is Old Testament. You look at the Ark of the Covenant and the, the relics that's inside the Ark of the Covenant itself, which reminds them. That's why, and, and look at how a man who, when the Ark was tipping over, how God had God killed this man because... Um, the ark was tipping over. I think his name was Uz. Y'all say Uz, but it's capital. It's U U long. Um, and God, God killed him because he went to stop the ark from falling over. And he did it for, well, a couple of reasons. But the main reasons is because of disobedience of those who were carrying this relic. All right? Uh, and it was not to be carried in the way they were carrying it and the people who were carrying it. No one was supposed to touch it but the, the but the, the priests or the Levites, all right? And they put it on the carts and stuff like that. And so God had to use this ooze as an example, all right? But also, there was no fire, no no thunderstorm, no, no nothing that came from the sky and struck the man. No, that um, was a... Um, was an electric current that was uh, because you got gold, you got metal in there, and that is a conduit, a conduit. Those of you who are maybe carpenters or know anything about electric, the Ark of the Covenant was a conduit. And so God just took what was natural. You know, y'all looking for God to do all these miraculous things. He don't have to do miraculous things for you. He just take what he already created and he uses that. His creation to either bless you or to punish you or to curse you or all kind of stuff. And weather patterns and all this stuff. Y'all said, look at the glory and the miraculous thing. Well, it, it may be glorious because God did make it. But pretty much he, it, everything that was made was made by him is already there. He just pretty much allowed nature to do what it does. Uh, Y'all call it miraculous. God says, well, that's, I made it to do that. So the Ark of the Covenant was it any it was an electric conduit and when he touched it he got shocked the scripture says god kills him well he did <laughs> okay it's an amazing amazing thing if you, when you look at it and then you go through isaiah and, and you know uh, the these who were the repairer of the breach okay those who respected the waste places all right god still are in those people who do not destroy certain things he want he want them to remember 
uh, by looking at these things so that y'all can put your focus on Christ, on God himself, and not so much on these relics, okay? Then what happened, God, uh, the man began to build these buildings, uh, these cathedrals, and then y'all were, you know, not just Catholics, but Protestants, and there, there's a spire on uh, Notre Dame, all right, and you uh, all start building these churches, uh, the Protestant churches, um, and they put, of course, um, the, um, what, what, what y'all call that? What, what is that? Oblux? Ob oblux? It's really an oblux. It's really a, an unholy uh, uh, an item there, but y'all call it a steeple, okay? All right, so really there's no difference in one of our Protestant churches that we admire burning down as this Notre Dame. To the Catholics, it, it is devastating to them because that's their place of worship. To the world, it is an architectural uh, wonderment uh, because of what it went through. Uh, it went through the French Revolution, actually. The place was built around in, a, in the 12th century, 11, I don't know, 1160, somewhere around now, and it took 100 years to build it. But it went through so much. And through the French Revolution, uh, Revolution there were uh, some relics in there that was, that was honorable to the people uh, that were burned and, and stolen. Um, and then it, it continued for uh, hundreds of years to go through renovation, and renovation, and then renovation. The same thing happened to the White House. The White House itself was burned. Many of you may not may not uh, remember reading in, in in school about the uh, American Revolution and the War of eighteen twelve. I think it was when they and when the British came over and they overtook and they went in there and we know the wonderful story of as the Dolly Madison who took the painting of um, no not Dolly Madison one of the yeah, well, the, yeah, I think it was her who took, who rescued the painting of the of which president was that? Abraham Lincoln? No, I'm not Abraham. Uh, George Washington? Who was it? Uh, okay, my memory leaves me. All right, and uh, White House burned, and there's still, if you look at, if you ever visited the White House, you'll see some of the burn marks that they left there, uh, even though they reconstructed. There's still some burn marks that you can see. All right, from that fire of uh, 18, I think it was 1812. All right, uh, Garcia, G.E., hmm? speak, yes. Hey, hey, Richard Hall, bless him. So, um, this unfortunate, oh, George Washington, Garcia, okay. So I'm, 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 I'm hoping I'm right, per George, per, per Garcia Johnson. So this is something. The United States is a young nation still, even though, we think and we're looking at well, 1776 is not really the date, but let's go with it. It's really like 1780 something. Yeah, the the completion and the signing of the Declaration of Independence. Um, but we're still a very young nation, all right. We're looking at the 12th century here, and the buildings and the the uh, the architectural texture uh, uh, in Europe. Are many of them are still standing after a thousand years? It's, there's structures that are there that are, that are over a thousand years old. So you got to understand how many people this affect from reading in our history books and many people who've gone over there and taken tours. All right. So this is not so much a religious upset for the world as it is as it is a a international treasure. Bless you, sweet Felicia. So my heart is saddened because the, because I'm into architect. Uh, you come to Chicago and you'll see the French um, persuasion here in in our great city of Chicago. Go downtown and you see the Louis and Sullivan, Louis Sullivan, and you see a lot of the great uh, architects. And they may not have done the work here, but you have other Midwest. Well, European, many of the Europeans came here to the United States and they just brought their tools with them. Uh, you look at the um, the world, um, what was it called? The World Exposition that was done 1893 here in Chicago, where because of the World Exposition here in Chicago, y'all get the light bulb. Actually, I will show y'all. You had the fight between Thomas Edison and um, uh, Nikola Tesla, right? 
and George Wash George Westinghouse, okay? And all these names popped up during this time. One was talking about AC and the other one was talking about giving the world DC. And uh, Thomas Edison won the patent or uh, the bid for his electric light. Tesla was going for that. And and the lights got turned on for the first time at the World Exposition here in Chicago. And you'll see the French um, persuasion, the street on the, mid the Midway Plaisance, right there where the University of Chicago is, okay? So, believe it or not, even though Tesla lost that bid, the light bulbs y'all have today, the spiral light bulbs that last forever, that's not Edison, y'all. That's uh, Nikola Tesla. That's his invention. So it may seem like he lost and he died a, um, a, a alone. What's the word you call it when a man dies? When a man is he keeps he's isolated and he dies a, um, pretty much to himself and poor and whatever. Okay, what do y'all call that? All right. Well, he died that way. Uh, but that bub lives on. Every time you get in your car and you turn on the ignition, that ignition. That's that's Nikola, Nikola Tesla. That's his invention. You understand? So his invention really is all around. But he is uh, he seemed to be forgotten. And the only time we kind of remember him when, when we hear the, the, the Tesla car, okay? It was probably has nothing to do with him. All right? Uh, I don't know, y'all. Check my facts there. Okay? Uh, so if it was important, if it was so important, why did they not have fire protection around the building? Well... Um, um, many Muslims in and hate that mess. Uh, it would not take log for them, or just typos, <laughs> to figure how to do away with that mess. Okay, it's hard for me to read what you're saying, man. Um, yeah, Victor Hugo's Hunchback, yes, inspired by the that yeah, edifice. Uh, Brony, yep, I mentioned that earlier. Um, most of the interior was wood. So that place pretty much was an, was Noah's Ark. It just, shh. And we don't know yet. It's going to take probably weeks for them to, to know what caused this fire because it was under construction. That place is always under construction. 300 years of construction, okay, has gone, that that place has gone through, all right? So it's difficult uh, uh, to try to, um, protect this place from any type of spark because it's mostly wood in the inside. That's that's very difficult. Yeah, Noah's Ark or a, a tinder box. All yep, all that wood is pretty much a tinder. It's a shh. and so I don't know. I don't know. How, I don't. Uh, that's really when you look at it. Those of you who admire history, you admire old buildings. My heart hurt not for the religious. Because God never told y'all to build any buildings for him. He says, I will not dwell in any temples made by man's hands. Matter of fact, he, he, he scoffed. He, he laughed at the city. He says, how dare you? He says, why would you think I can dwell in a, in a building when I created the heavens and the earth? What makes you think I'm going to live in that little thing? All right. Uh, and then we, didn't, we ignored all that and we began to build these multi-million dollar edifices. Okay. And um, but look at the Gothic style of uh, look at the you look at the gargoyle gargoyles that are are hovered around the ceilings. OK, uh, it's it's um, it's a sight to see. And we borrowed from the European architecture here. And in, in when we build a lot of our Protestant churches here. Uh, I when we bought our, our building here in 1971, we bought a building over here. In Chicago, in the Roseland area, uh, Rehoboth Church of God in Christ, and it was an old Swedish Covenant building that we bought. It was built in the 1800s, and, and it's still there, still there. And I remember walking in that building in 1971. I was a little boy then, but I remember looking up and seeing uh, those um, uh, what they call the, uh, the spirit people. And they were Gothic st uh, structures and and, um, and writings and what have you. Uh, and designs on this, and, and it freaked me out, you know. But as I got older, I began to study uh, the the Gothic style or Romanesque uh, architectural um, work and how it was 
placed in these uh, buildings like the Notre Dame, all right? And, you know, a lot of that is middle-aged stuff. Um, uh, I think it's called Our Lady of Paris. So that's, the, that's the meaning of the building, uh, Notre Dame. Uh, I was trying to see if I could find something on, on it. Uh, on I'm sure Wikipedia got some stuff on it, but uh, it's, a, it's a sight to see. And I'm sure that it is going to be uh, repeated on our news stations all day long and uh, the people are mourning. So I say let's pray for the people who mourn the loss uh, and those in Paris, Paris um, the loss of such a, a structure. Again, it, it, it has the same feeling to them as the World Trade Centers did uh, on 911. Same feeling. We, they're feeling this. It's, it has the same type of feeling. See, it's, it doesn't matter how things got destroyed, but psychologically, uh, it's the, it has the same the neural the same neural transmitter is uh, is activated. Doesn't matter how is activated. When is activated, a person still feel a sense of loss. Does that make sense to any of you? That's why sometimes your husband and your wife and your children act a certain way and they act a way, uh, uh, they have this type of sorrow as if they lost someone, like someone died in their life, all right? Because the, that transmitter is activated. And so these people in Paris feel the same loss we felt, even though we've lost, uh, how many people uh, were, dis were killed in 911? Was it almost 3,000 people? They are feeling the same type of loss because of how it affects the, uh, the, the memory, the mind. All right? So let's pray for them. Yep, feelings of complete loss, Amber Rogers. Yes. So people are, are tossed on my Facebook wall. One is saying, you know, well, good riddance. You know, you should not be building that, that anyway. Y'all worship in these buildings. That's one. And then another one of my. Uh, Christian friends are saying, how dare y'all, can y'all just let the people mourn, you know, and things like that. So you got, you got two, two tales going on here. What I would like to say to you people, though, is that watch where you pull your heart, or allow your heart to be pulled to. Because a lot of times what we, what we do is, you remember that show I did a few days ago about apostasy and how easy it is for us to be pulled to something that we feel? You got to be careful. Even though you suffer a particular type of a loss, you still got to be wise in how you mourn. You still got to be wise in how you mourn. You cannot steal. You cannot lose your focus. And that's how um, the enemy wins because he knows that we have put our love and trust and our focus on things of the world. And then our heart goes that way. And so God says, you can't love me and love the world. You can't. You just can't do that. You're either going to love me, hate the world, or vice versa. All right? So you got to be careful how much of your heart you put on secular things. You just got to be careful. Now, it is natural to mourn, and God allowed even the Jews to mourn over secular things. He allowed them to do that because he knows that they're human, and they have attached themselves to human things. But don't be emotionally out of control. Thank you, uh, Bernia. Be careful because you still are a believer in Jesus Christ, and and you, so don't allow uh, the the worldly the, to the world love its own, and it weeps and cries for its own. When you join that party, you could get pulled into that, and before you know it, I look at the whole Nipsey Nipsey hustle, uh, his um, his funeral the other day over the weekend. And, you know, the rappers all came there, and I'm glad it wasn't at a church and, you know, what have you, because, you know, it just, I knew it was going to kind of get out of control by some of the, uh, the, the beliefs and the music and what have you. So let them do it in their public arenas, which was fine. But then his mom got up and she began to summons up the dead. And it reminded me of um, the show I did um, with Eva, Eyala Van Zanten, I talked about how she is a priestess and how she worships that way as well. She worships those and uh, prays those 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 gods and demigods and what have you, right? And the people who are 
running to her for spiritual advice, you know, get caught up into that. And they, she's saying all of the right things. She's using the Christian Bible, um, you know, to uh, speak certain words into you because she knows, she knows how you act. She knows what you, what you what you follow, okay? Satan knows what you follow, all right? And so you you and so you get these people who are uh, of of Satan's army to come over here and 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 nourish you and, and and inspire you and counsel you and all these things. And so Christians was coming on my wall on YouTube here in YouTube on that show and many Christians were like, it's okay, let her do that. She's not harming. Don't you go to this person for this for you go to an unsaved doctor, you go to an unsaved lawyer. Yes, I go to all those unsaved people for natural things, for common things in life. All right. I go to stores where some people might be devil worshipers, but they will sell me my meat and pork and whatever I eat, okay, and catfish because it's is all they didn't create that food. They're only selling the products, but they didn't create it, all right? But when it comes to my spiritual life, when I'm giving someone my mind, now you're talking about something else that you should not be giving your spirit, man, or your mind over to that which is witchcraft. Now, that's different. So you Christians who are fighting me to allow someone like that to uh, minister to me, you're crazy. You're crazy, and you don't know the scriptures. You don't know the word. So Nipsey Hussle... Um, uh, his his mom was summoning up, pulling dead folk out the grave, and the people that were there who were Christians, there were many Christians at the funeral, and Christians watching the funeral, they were being pulled into that, and they were reciting the things that she was saying to recite. And then I said, oh my God, oh my God. You see what I'm saying? So you are, you guys are piling up with the world, and you're piling up with these secular artists and these rappers, all right? When you pile up with them, then what happens is evil communication corrupts good manners. And then you pile up with everything. Everything. They begin to take your mind, your body, and your soul. And that's why God said, he was very specific. He says that you should love me with everything. The first commandment, all right? Love me with, your, with all your heart, your mind, your body, your soul, everything. Because if you do that, then you can't break the rest of the commandments. That's why the first one is important when the disciples ask, which is the which is the greatest? And Jesus led them not to the fifth commandment, not to the eighth commandment. He led them to the first one. Because if you if you do that one, he says, now I'm going to give you a, a new one. And this one is just as equal to the first one. If, if you follow those, you cannot break the Ten Commandments. It's impossible to break. And you cannot allow uh, a, a, um, an unholy relic or person to pull you. All right? You won't get caught up uh, into uh, phony uh, money and counterfeit doctrines and theologies and what have you. Okay? You won't do that. So when you guys pull your heart and follow after these secular people, then they grab you because they, they become more powerful than you. Because your heart, they have your heart. Guard your heart. Guard your heart. A Christian's changing their Facebook profiles to his picture. Yes, I'm going to do a show on Nipsey Hustle, but not in the way y'all think I'm going to do it. I'm going to do a show in the way that I can communicate with millennials because my children uh, knew who Nipsey was. I called both of my children on the phone and asked them, okay, what do y'all know about him? Because I want to know what my children are connected to in their hearts. My daughter was like, I really didn't follow the dude. <laughs> I was like, okay, all right. She said, you know, his music is, you know, got a lot of cussing in it. You know, my daughter, she's something else. And my son, he's into that, uh, that world, meaning he's a, he's a music producer, all right? And so I called him, you know, and the way he talked, he talked less about the music and more about the humanitarian work that Nipsey was doing. And that's when I says, that's it right there. Let me talk to that audience right there. Uh, uh, hey, uh, Terry says, I was watching the news coverage about the fire. A lady from England talked about all the paintings, including the, the Mona Lisa that are in the cathedral. Yes, good teaching on attaching yourselves to things. Some, sometimes we make those things a God. Terry Bailey, yes. So my heart, 
started to leap when I found out the architectural uh, work that's inside of the, the, you know, the Catholics, they hold on to very priceless um, relics. You go down there to, um, to the Vatican, and you go up in there, the Sistine Chapel, go down in the basement of the Sistine Chapel. There's only one guy that, that's allowed to show you down there, all right? There's things down there I don't even know if the Pope ever seen, all right? It's, it's so many relics down there that are thousands of years old, all right? So these things have a value, not so much for its holiness, <laughs> but, but more so for its, its, um, its financial and, and memorial uh, value. Only those of us who have suffered tragic losses due to fire can understand how easy it is to mourn things like photos. Hey, Joe, I had a couple fires. I know what it means to lose. And you don't have to have a fire to feel this because I suffered uh, vandalism. This house right here was broken in. When I first moved here, someone broke in this house. They thought it was vacant. Then they broke in and stole valuable things that I had. So trust me, I know. I had stuff in storage in South Dakota. And I went away and, and didn't pay the bill. And stuff that videos of my children when they were born, when they were little bitty kids, are gone on VHS tapes and pictures gone. You don't need a fire to feel this way. So I know what these people are feeling. Um, is God trying to tell the Catholic Church something? A building can fall, but don't let your soul fall into eternal damnation. Dale sins? Possibly. But I'm not even going to attribute this so much to what God is saying. God was speaking way, God was speaking to the Catholic Church way before this <laughs> Notre Dame fire. But I hear what you're saying. Uh, Richard says, <coughs> <coughs> y'all excuse me, uh, something else that has come to mind, another church is burning down, is just not here in the USA. I can relate to the grief and pain the French citizens are feeling as many years ago. I also suffered loss of precious and sentimental possessions due to fire. Look at the look at the Alabama, where this arson, this guy who was the son of the police, was he a police commander or poli uh, fire? I don't know what he was. You know, those two or three uh, historical churches burned because of this. Can, and my my heart just dropped when I saw those those churches on fire. You know, they were they were historical uh, um, buildings. Um, what are you saying here? It's it's about balance, Deatrice is saying, in the natural and spiritual. You don't have to worship something natural to enjoy it. Yes, art, architecture. Uh, music can be a religion. It brings people together and makes you move in many emotions and behaviors. Yes, Bernia Williams, yes. Yes. Um, my cousin took her grandma, Ann Campbell, there last year. Oh, wow, Bernia. Yeah, so this, this is... Uh, this is touching many people from around the world. So I just wanted to come. I didn't want to be long at all because I want to eat some food. All right. But I just want y'all to know that we all are hurting over this. Um, many of us people who run with me, we're hurting because uh, much of the art has been destroyed. The facade outside is the art and that which is inside is destroyed. Uh, um, and um, I don't know how much they'll be able to rescue. Uh, I so wanted to visit Notre Dame. It's such a beautiful, I iconic symbolism of our history and culture. I am heartbroken. Lynn, yes, I know. It is. I live here in Roseland, and Pullman is right next door to the town of Pullman, the neighborhood. We don't really call them towns in Chicago. We call them neighborhoods. And there is a, there was, George Pullman created this first of any city uh, in America, it's a company town, the first of the company towns. It was built in the 1800s. Right up here, I call it Surzville. And y'all see my romance in the park when I do in the summertime when I'm walking in the park and talking to y'all about relationship issues. When I'm, I'm, it's, it's George Pullman's Park, all right? Pullman, that neighborhood is named after him. Uh, and that's where your Pullman trains were. Uh, the sleeper cars, he created the sleeper cars. The Amtrak got them now, you know. 
Uh, and so that's right here. And people will come from around the world to visit uh, this Pullman place here. It was a city in itself. It's only a few blocks long, and he built homes for the workers. And the Pullman porters um, got their fame here. Black men, the porters were all black, and they were the ones who, you know, shined their shoes and the one that said, all aboard, and they wore the hats and their outfits and what have you. Uh, and there are Pullman, there's a Pullman uh, Museum uh, in uh, Bronzeville here in Chicago. And if you were black in a Pullman, you were considered um, a very upscale man. You, was, you were highly respected in your community as a, a Pullman uh, back in the day. All right. And so I'm, I'm talking about this because I'm leading up to a fire that happened uh, in, in 1990. I don't know, 97, I think it was. I remember turning on the TV and I'm watching this place burn. It was just like the Notre Dame. It was a clock tower, the clock tower. And it was on fire. And I'm a young man and my heart, my heart as if I lived there. I was crying because I could not believe something like that was burning. Um, and it was two towers there. So when you go here and when you come over here right now, you see scaffolding just like the, uh, I'm looking, I'm pointing this way because that's where my TV is. Um, you see the spire, the spire. Well, Pullman clock tower got one just like that and to see that thing just collapse hurt me so i understand what they're going what they're going through now they're restoring the clock tower right now and it's so beautiful but it's going to take forever almost to rebuild that whole pullman park um here i don't know if they're gonna i don't know what they're gonna do because as you can as you can notice in new york we didn't rebuild the towers we just put a m memorial uh, type of spire or spire there. I don't know what that is. Uh, I don't know if they're going to rebuild Notre Dame. I don't know, can you? It, it won't have its, of course, brilliance and significance to rebuild. It just won't. It just won't. It'll never be the same. And my heart goes out to the people there in Paris, France. Hurting, yes, but I believe we're also seeking answers physically and spiritually. Richard Hall. Let's end with this wonderful, wonderful song here. I think uh, the great Eric Jewel Hayes put it on my wall. You may build a cathedral, large or small. You may build a skyscraper, grand or tall. You may conquer all the failures of the past, but only what you do for Christ will last. Remember, only what you do for Christ will last. You may seek earthly treasures, Wealth and fame and the world might be impressed by your great name. And, but when all your earthly cares of life has passed, then only what you do for Christ will last. Remember, only what you do for Christ will last. Those Notre Dame is pretty much gone. The World Trade Center is gone. And many of the I noticed some of the black churches, they burned down, they're gone. All these things are gone. And I remember having a vision uh, while driving down the street. I saw the Sears Tower crumble. I, I saw John Hancock building crumble. All right. I saw some of the great skyscrapers of, of our country crumble. All right. Uh, I was looking at the, the skyline, which is one of the most beautiful skylines in the world, next to France in Chicago. Those buildings just began to just crumble, and I had the vision. I just went right into prayer. I said, oh, my God, oh, my God, because that day is coming. It doesn't matter. Y'all can worship all of these buildings all you want to, but remember, only what you do for Christ, it will last, and it will last forever and forever. All right, y'all, hit the share button, if you will, if you're on YouTube. Hit the subscribe and the bell, and I'll come back with some more uh, of banter like this. All right? And uh, go ahead and get the book, uh, The Four Women That Men Desire. Go to Amazon.com right now, and if you bought the book, leave a review. Will you please help a brother out?
The sir, I'm sorry, the four women <laughs> that men desire. It's selling off the shelf. All right? And if you want to donate and give to the ministry, y'all know the cash app is Sir Walter J. Dollar sign Sir Walter J is the cash app. And all I'm going to do is put it back into writing more of these books. <laughs> all right? So go to paypal.com and type in gifted friends at aol.com. Love you guys. We'll see you again. Maybe tonight. Midnight Melodies.